Okay. I need to be a little bit careful about this space. Okay, plenty of space. Um, so today we are going to get started uh, talking about truth tables. So last time we got to talk a little bit about propositions or statements, uh, and a statement is just something that's either true or false, right? Uh, and then we kind of start talking about there are statement connectives, like things like and, or, implication, if and only if, not. Um, and so today we're going to start talking about, so how do these things work together uh, in terms of uh, truth values? So we're going to start talking about truth tables. And we'll start with something very simple and a word that we use all the time, and that is the word and. So uh, a truth table is just really simple. Where I'm going to put a couple propositions on here. Let's say P and Q. And then over on this side of the truth table, I'm going to put in uh, what I'm working with and. And remember the way that we write and is with a little caret. Um, so I'll put P and Q. And then what I want to do over here is just fill in all of the possible truth values for P and Q. So uh, P and Q could both be true. Uh, P could be true and Q could be false. P could be false and Q could be true. And then they could both be false, okay? Um, and then we wanna fill in, okay, if this is the case, then what's going on over here? And is pretty easy because we use this one actually. And we, I think, understand what it means. So what it means for an and statement to be true is typically it means both of the things are true. So if I say, my name is Nick Willis and um, we are at George Fox University, you're, you would be like, yeah, that's right. Why? Because both of the things are true. But if either one of the statements is false, like I'd say, my name's Nick Willis and the moon is made out of cheese, you'd be like, I take issue with that statement, right? Uh, because not both of those things are true, one of them is false. So for an and statement to be true, both of the um, statements P and Q need to be true. So this is true, but if either one of them is false, then we say that the and statement is false. So the rest of these are Okay, um, eraser. Now let's talk about the statement or. So similarly, we'll put P and Q, and then we have P or Q, and we can have true, 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 false false true and false false and now or is different right uh, what has to be the case in order for an or statement to be true yeah what, yeah either one right so now if I say my name is Nick Willis or the moon is made out of cheese you're good with that because my name is Nick Willis and I said or so one of the two needs to be true, or possibly both. Um, and so if any, either one is true, then the or statement is true. So this is true, this is true, this is true, but false or false, that's still false. Okay, something that comes up a lot, uh, and I think that this is worth saying right now is Later in this course, I'll say this is the case or this is the case. And people will be like, uh, and, and so, and, and that's true. And you're like, well, that's actually not the case. Just the first one's true. And I'm like, 
I don't care because I can always say or something else, right? So if my name is Nick Willis, then I can say my name is Nick Willis or my name is Darth Vader. And everybody's like, sure, whatever, because you said or. And as long as the first one is true, then the or statement is true. How this comes up a lot is like, I could say uh, X, let's say I knew that X is less than Y. Then something that comes up a lot is I say, so I know that X is less than or equal to Y. And people will be like, well, it is, uh, it, it's actually just less than Y. And I'm like, right. It's just less than Y. So it's less than or it's equal to Y. Right? So or means that one of the two things is true. And so sometimes when you'll see this later, it's a good thing to remember that I'm saying, if I know this is true, then I also know that this is true. Right? Because I just or on something. And I could have said, X is less than Y, if I know that that's true, then X is less than Y, or my name is Darth Vader. And that would be perfectly acceptable to write in the proof, too. It isn't necessarily that helpful <laughs> to the proof, but it's true. Is everybody with me? So if I know that one statement is true, I can always tack on some other statement to it with an or, and that's also true. Yeah. Would it be, like, clear to write x is less than y or x is equal to y you could but uh maybe it would be more clear if you didn't understand it or right. you, you know what i'm saying so all i'm saying is sometimes it can be kind of tricky where you're like wait a second but we know it's less than it's like well sure you know it's less than and that's why we can say it's less than or it's equal to so just knowing that sometimes you're using like an or statement in, dis in disguise and right. just be aware that that's okay. All right. Uh, next one is not. And this one's very simple. Um, so basically we just have P and then we have not P. And P could either be true or false. And if P is true, then not P is false and if p is true then not p i'm sorry if p is false then not p is true so a not just changes the truth value of the statement simple enough okay now it gets interesting implies so let's say we have p and q and then we have the statement that p implies Q. We have true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Okay. So this one's a little more tricky. Uh, we use these kinds of statements all the time. We say, if this is true, then this is true, like kind of a cause and effect relationship. But I, I think that most of us don't even don't necessarily understand uh, this truth table like we would and or or. All right, so first of all, let's say that I say something uh, like this. I always like to use this in, in terms of a car salesman. Okay, I think that a car, selling a car is a great analogy for an implied statement. And this is what I would say is, if you sign on the dotted line, then I will give you this car or sell you this car. If you sign on the dotted line, then I will sell you this car. Now let's say I sign on the dotted line and then the guy gives me the car. Did he keep his word? I agree. So I signed, he gave me the car, and the question is, did he keep his word? Was the bargain upheld? Yeah, it was. Okay, second scenario. I sign on the dotted line, 
he doesn't give me the car. Is was the deal upheld? Absolutely not. Right. I I did my part of the bargain. He didn't do his part of the bargain. That was a false statement that he made to me. That if I signed the on the dotted line, he would give me the car. Okay, here's a, where it starts getting a little more interesting. Let's say that I didn't sign. So I said, no, 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 I'm not going to sign that. And he's like, it's okay, here's the car. Did he keep his word? Well, the, the deal was that if I sign, he'll give me the car. I said, I won't sign. Did he keep his word? I'm not talking about what did I do. I'm saying, did the statement, could he sue me or something? Or could I sue him? Like, the, no deal was broken here. He said, sign here and I'll give you the car. I didn't sign. He decided to give me the car. It's kind of like, well, the deal wasn't broken. I didn't sign. And then he did whatever he wanted to. So this is actually true. Last scenario, I don't sign on the dotted line. He doesn't give me the car. Is this okay? Yeah, yeah. is the bargain upheld? If you sign, then I'll give you the car. I didn't sign, he didn't give me the car. Was the bargain held up? Yeah, it was. So the only way that an implication can be false is if the P statement is true, but the Q statement is false. Any other situation, we get true. So if the P statement in a P implies Q is false, it doesn't matter what Q is the implication ends up being true. So I can make all sorts of crazy statements and they're actually true. Like I can say, if my name is Darth Vader, then the moon is made of cheese. True, correct? And, and this is where people are kind of like, now wait a second, neither of those things are true. I, I didn't say either of those things were true. I said the implication is true. That if my name is Darth Vader, which it is not, then the moon is made of cheese, which it is not. But since I started with a statement that's false, any implication I make is true. Everybody with me? So I have to actually meet the first condition in order for the implication to be false. If you never meet the first condition, the implication can never be false. Okay. Um, let me write a definition here. Question? Oh, I, yeah. I was going to just add on to that by saying if the first implication is false, then the second implication doesn't matter because it's bogus anyway. I don't know, it's like... Yeah, that is right. It's kind of like, uh, I again, I like to think of it as a contract. If I don't sign the contract, the contract is valid. Right? right? If I don't sign it, then it, it's true by default because I never entered into the contract. But as soon as you enter into the contract, then the, the person can either uphold the contract or break the contract. But if I never enter into it, then they upheld the contract. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's a way of thinking about it that I like. It's like you're entering into a deal, and if you never sign on the dotted line, then you can't, the guy can't be said, well, you're a liar. It's like, why? Well, you never signed. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, so definition. Oh, I'm running out of room here. Maybe I'll move somewhere else. So definition in the statement P implies Q 
P is called the hypothesis. And Q is called the conclusion. All right, and also a definition. P implies Q is called vacuously true if P is false. Okay, so these are just some mathy terms that you need to know is that if I write P implies Q, then I could refer to P as the hypothesis of the implication. Q is the conclusion of the implication. Uh, and then also, if you have a situation where P implies Q and P is false, then we say that the implication is vacuously true. In other words, you never got into it, so it's true by default. Makes sense. This comes up all the time. Um, like if I said, let's see, um, let's say you had a classroom that was empty. Okay, no one was in the classroom. And I said, every student in that classroom is wearing red. Or if you're a student in that classroom, then you're wearing red. Is that statement true? if the classroom is empty yes it's a true statement because so to speak all of the students in that classroom are wearing red of course there are none of them to test as soon as there's a student in there then i have to test and see are they wearing red but if no one's in there it's true by default yes so would you want us to say that like if it was you don't need to it's just kind of language that we use in math and so I could say like this statement is vacuously true and then you know oh, oh you mean that the hypothesis is false does that make sense yeah. yeah so it's just something we say from time to time and it's good to be aware of okay let's uh, do the same thing for if and only now So, if and only if, uh, there's another way that I will write if and only if, uh, and that is we shorten this down because this is kind of longer, right, to I, F, F. So, if I write I, F, F, instead of just I, F, it's not because I'm losing my mind. That just means if and only if. Okay, uh, so we have P, we have Q, we have P, if and only if, Q. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And a double implication like this, or if and only if, is true if both P and Q have the same truth value. So if they have the same truth value, then um, this is true. So true if and only if true is true. True if and only if false is false because they don't have the same truth value. Same thing with false and true, this is false. But false implies false, those have the same truth value. So we would say true. So if and only if means they have the same truth value. Make sense? Okay. Let's do uh, some examples. Mm -hmm. 
Um, P will be equal to um, Dr. Willis is wearing blue. Q will be um, The sky is cloudy. Um, let's see, uh, R will be it is raining and S will be the moon is made of cheeks. Okay, so using these statements, let's uh, determine the truth value of a couple different things that I write. By the way, maybe we should just get this all straight. Yes, sir. So are those prime statements? Uh, yeah, they would be considered prime statements in this case, because there's no ors or ands or things like that. Um, is that why you use That's right. Yeah. Uh, so let's just get our uh, it straight among us. Like it does seem that I am wearing blue. I think we can agree that my sweater is blue. Is the sky cloudy currently? Yeah, I think we can go with yes on that. Uh, is it raining? Well, I did feel like a sprinkle on my way over, but I think no. I think it's not raining. And is the moon made of cheese? I think we can go with no. Okay, so given that, what do we think of the following? True or false? So let's start with something simple. P or Q? I'm sorry, and. Yeah. P and Q. Is this a true statement, false statement? What do you think? True. P is true. Q is true. An and statement has to have both of them true, but it is. So this is true. Okay. Uh, how about P implies Q? It's true. Yeah. Uh, P is true. Q is true. And true implies true is true. So this is true. How about S implies Q. It's true. So the statement, if the moon is made of cheese, then the sky is cloudy. That's true. Okay. Uh, how about P implies S? That is false. That is correct. Uh, why? P is true. So we've entered into this negotiation, but S is false. So the only way that an implication can ever be false is if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false, which just happens to be the situation we're in. So this is false. Okay. How about R or S? Yeah, so we have a false statement or a false statement. That's false. Okay. How about R if and only if S? Yeah, that's true because they have the same truth value. Right, so this is true. And then finally, how about this one? Not P or R. So the not goes to the P, correct? And P is true. 
So not he is false. So we have false or false, which is false. Sound good? Okay. So yes. Because these statements are written by now not requiring statements. Correct. So like uh, this, if I actually wrote this out in English and I said something like, Dr. Willis is wearing blue and the sky is cloudy. That's not a prime statement because I use the and in it. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do something more interesting. I'll move back here. Myself one more space. Okay, so example let's construct the truth table or um, the statement not P and Q implies not P and not Q. Okay, um, so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of break it up into some pieces, and this is where the knowledge of like what happens first, what happens second, and so on is valuable to us. So let's start with just the only two statements that I have to deal with here are P and Q. And P and Q can be either both true, true, false, false, true, false, false. Uh, and then I'm going to not try to do the whole thing at once. And uh, that's where you kind of get yourself into a little trouble if you're trying to do this all at once. It can be kind of difficult. So what I usually do is I break it up into some smaller pieces. Like if I were really breaking it up into smaller pieces, I might just start with P and Q. Okay, so really quick, I'm going to say, okay, P and Q, what's going on with that if these are the cases? So true and true would give me that P and Q is true. And true and false is false. False and true, false. And then false and false is false. Okay, very good. And now I can say, well, then I can not that. So I can say not P and Q. And of course, that just negates everything that I had in this column. So I'd say it's false, true, true, true. Very good. Okay, remember what happens, what's like the main connective or the thing that happens last here? Yeah, the implication. So let's do that last. Okay, so now let's move over here and look at this guy. Um, if I really wanted to break it up, I'm being very careful right now. I could just say, well, then what's not P? Well, not P, I just negate this column, right? So I have false, false, true, true. False, false, true, true. I can say what's not Q. So I just negate this column so I get false, true, false, true. False, true, false, true. And then finally I can say what's not P and not Q. And let's see, so I'm anding together to false and false. So false and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. And then finally, true and true is true. Okay, very good. Now we finally get to the very last step, which is the big implication, because I know what this guy is, and I know what this guy is. So I get, I'll write it kind of little here, not P and Q implies not P and not Q. All right, uh, so basically this column implies this column. 
right? So I get false implies false. It's true, right? And in fact, if anything in this column is false, I can just go ahead and mark down true, right? Because if the hypothesis is false, the implication is true. So false implies false is true. True implies false is false. Uh, true implies false is false. And then finally, true implies true is true. Okay, and I'm done. So really the kind of the answer to this whole thing is this column. Right, that's kind of my final solution to this truth table. But what is it really telling me? Well, it's telling me that this statement that I just made up here, notice that I never told you what P and Q are, they're just some statements. But what I know for sure is that this more complicated statement is sometimes true and it's sometimes not true. It depends. Right now, what would be kind of nice is if you found out, oh, it doesn't even matter what P and Q are, that statement is always true. Or it might be interesting to know, it doesn't matter what P and Q are, this is always false. But that's not the case in this situation. Sometimes this is a true statement, sometimes this is a false statement. So it depends. Does that make sense? Uh, and so, uh, if I were to ask you, like, is this statement always true? You could say, you could make a truth table for it, and you could say, no, no, no. If P is true and Q is false, this thing's false. Or, if P is false and Q is true, this statement is false. So, a truth table is helpful in that way as it helps you to see is, could this statement ever be false? Or could this statement ever be true? Um, okay. Let's see. Let's do another one, just for practice. So, example. Let's construct the truth table. Or the following, not P and Q implies not P. Oh, I just did. That's more. Do it again. Okay. Uh, not P and Q or R implies not P or R. There we go. That's better. So uh, we have P, Q, and R as all statements that could either be true or false, and we don't know which. So we're going to need more uh, rows to our truth table, because we have P and Q and R. Um, so we have P, we have Q, we have R. So how many different combinations of true and falses will show up down there? Eight, right? Because P can be true or false, Q can be true or false, R can be true or false, so two times two times two, we get eight. So if you're ever in this th situation with three of these guys, I don't think it, it, the book is ever mean enough to give you four. But uh, if you were in three, this is the way that I'd like you to write it, just to keep everybody in, on the same page. I'd like you to go true, 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 false, 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 false. So four trues, four falses, and then do two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. So true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then just do one, true, false, true, false, all the way down. So true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. 
and that will give you every combination. So four, four, two, 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 one, 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 one. Okay. Now we've got them all, and now we can start breaking this into some smaller bite-sized pieces. Uh, so when you look at this thing, what kind of stands out to you is this happens first. The parentheses, that's right. So I think I'll start there and I'll say, so what's P and Q? Okay, so that's easy enough. We'll just take these two columns, P and Q and and them. So I have true and true, true, true and true, true, true and false is false. True and false is false. False and true is false. And in fact, everything else is going to be false because there's a false in. Okay, so we've got four more false, 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 false. Okay, then what would we do next? Yeah, the not gets to act on the parentheses, so I have not P and Q. And this is easy, I just negate this column. So I get false, false, true, 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 true. Very good. Then, um, what? Yeah, we might as well just like finish off this side. So let's say not P and Q or R. So what's going on here is I have this column or this column, right? So I have false or true, which is true. So I need one of them to be true. I have false or false, false. I have true or true, true, true. I have true or false, true. And then all of these have at least one truth, right? So I could just fill in true. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we can work on the other side of the implication. Maybe I'm getting ambitious, uh, but let's try to do like kind of two steps at once. I think we can do it. Uh, if not, it it's better to be uh, more careful than less careful. Sometimes you're kind of like, hey, you know, I'm really good at this. And, uh, and I can kind of do like two or three things at once in my head and then just write it down. And maybe you are, but it kind of stinks when you're on that exam and you just get one wrong, you know, and then it messes up your whole truth table. So if in doubt, be more careful, okay? But since we're practicing, let's see if we can do this all at once. So let's do not P or R all in our head. So here's P, here's R. So we wanna not this one and or it with this one, right? So not true is false or true true okay false or false 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 or true true um, false or false oh I'm sorry Lying. false or false false and then all of these are trues right when we negate them and so we're boring, so everything else is going to be a true. True, 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 true. And then finally, we just need to do the implication. Correct. And so sometimes, if I'm lazy and I'm running out of board space, I'll just write star. Okay, so the answer is going to be this guy implies this guy. Right? So we get true implies true. True. False implies false. True. Uh, true implies true. True. True implies false. False. 
true implies true, true implies true. Everything else is just a true implies true, so they're all true. So this is interesting. So this is kind of a complicated statement, right? Uh, yeah. Do we need a conclusion about the probability of the true value of the statement based off of your own statement? Uh, I, yeah, in some sense you could if you were just if there was just like an equally likely chance of any of your uh, statements being true or false, then you could sort of say that like there's a one in eight chance that this thing is a false statement, right? Uh, yeah, you could say something like that. I think the bigger thing that we can say is like if I was going to say, okay, if this like if I was giving you an interesting problem, I might say, how is this, how could this statement be false? Right, so then the answer to that would be that, what is it, the fourth one down? That P would have to be true, Q would have to be false, R would have to be false. Does that make sense? So, um, yeah, so that's, it's just interesting. Now, what if we got into a situation where the whole ending column were true. That can actually happen. Yeah. Um, for the first one, can you just boil that down to P if and only if Q? Or is that not something you can do? Uh -huh. uh, that's a really good question. Very good. So uh, his question is, look at right here. This is just the typical setup. And over here, we have true, false, false, true which is the same truth table as you would get for P if and only if Q. So the question is, is this thing P if and only if Q? And the answer is yes. They are the same statement logically. So if you find true two statements that have the same truth values in their like kind of truth table column then they are logically equivalent statements we'll write all this down in just a minute but you made me jump ahead it's okay uh, but it's a good question and uh, this is this statement is p if and only if q and that's kind of weird to think about too it's like what do you mean no it's not that it's something different it's like no they are the same statement so there are different ways of saying the same thing. And that is actually really, really important in this class, that there are different ways of going about saying the same thing. And sometimes one way is helpful and one way isn't very helpful. Okay. And we'll learn about some of those things. Okay. Um, that was a perfect segue into what I'm talk about next so that's the end of section 1.1 by the way so I'm assigning some homework in section 1.1 uh, you need to do 1 through 26 even in the book and we will talk about those on Tuesday by the way also on Tuesday just so I don't forget to say it you do need to know who are you working with on your project and have a couple mathematicians that you're interested in doing your project, your little PowerPoint project on. Okay, we'll do that on Tuesday as well. Okay, let's move on to the next section. The next section is logical equivalence. And tautologies. All right, so um, building off what we just said, let's say we have P and Q. We have P implies Q, and we have not P or Q. So what I wanna do is just fill out this truth table. Um, so we get true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And let me fill things in. I know my implications. So true implies true is true. True implies false is false. 
false implies true is true, false implies false is true. And then what about not P or Q? So not P is false or true is true. False or false is false. Um, true or true is true. And true or false is true. So notice these two columns, right? They are exactly the same. So what we're saying, again, and I'll write this down formally in a second, is these two things are what we call logically equivalent statements. Let's think about it for just a second with like real words plugged in. So if I said, uh, what's a fun one? If I am a fireman, then I wear suspenders. Okay, there's an if then statement for you. If I am a fireman, then I wear suspenders. What I'm saying is that's the exact same thing as saying this. How would I say it? If I'm not a fireman, well, or I'm not a fireman, or I wear suspenders. That's the same thing. I'm not a fireman, or I wear suspenders. Is the same as if I'm a fireman, then I wear suspenders. Think about that for a second and hopefully you can kind of say, yeah, that is kind of true because if you're, if you're not a fireman, that's one thing. But if you are a fireman, then you wear suspenders. So that means you either aren't a fireman or you wear suspenders. Or thinking about it the other way, I'm not a fireman or I wear suspenders it's like, well, um, if, if you are a fireman then, like let's say that that's a true statement. I'm not a fireman or I wear suspenders. And I tell you, I'm a fireman. Then what would you conclude? You wear suspenders. So if you're a fireman, you must wear suspenders because one of those two statements was true, right? So if you really think this through, it does make sense that this one's only true if this is true. And this one's only true if this is true. So we call these two statements logically equivalent and we can bounce between them. So if I tell you, if I am a fireman, then I wear suspenders, you can say, oh, so you're not a fireman or you wear suspenders. It's like, yeah. You can jump between the logically equivalent statements and everything's fine. Yeah. So is that not taking into account like people that just wear suspenders? It is, in fact. So like I never said that people that don't aren't firemen can't wear suspenders. All I'm saying is that um either you aren't a fireman and in in that case wear them or not right like if you're not a fireman then we're done because that's true but if you are a fireman then that one's false so the other one must be true so it could be that both are true at the same time right because true or true is also true so i could not be a fireman and wear suspenders and that would still make the or statement true. So you gotta, it is a little bit of something to think about. And obviously in the case of this one, it's just kind of ridiculous to think about it, but it's still true that I could say, if P, uh, I'm sorry, P if and only if Q is the same as me saying, well, it's not the case that P and Q implies that not P and not Q, but I don't want to. <laughs> I, I doubt that there are going to be very many situations where that's super, super helpful for me to make that switch. But this switch is helpful a lot. And there will be other switches that we learn about that are very helpful to us. They're logically equivalent. Okay, let me write this down. So 
definition. Two statements. P, Q are logically equivalent. written that P is logically equivalent to Q. So it's kind of like an equal sign with three, three dashes. If P and Q have the same truth tables. So if two statements have the exact same truth table, then we say that they are logically equivalent, which means that we can kind of jump between the two. Now, let me tell you about some useful logical equivalences. Several useful logical equivalences. And right now it may not be really clear why these are so useful, but I'll try to explain the best I can. So first we have something very simple, and I think everybody can buy it, that not, not P is logically equivalent to P. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and that we just call a double negation, but it's pretty straightforward. So, um, second is that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. And this is what we call the OR form of an implication. So, this is the OR form of an implication. Okay. Here's a very important one, and that is that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Okay, let's think about that for just a second with like some real words. Uh, because this is an important one and one that not only will you use it a lot in this class, but if you're a math major and take any more classes, like you use it all the time. So uh, what is a contra? This is called the contrapositive. <clears throat> and basically what it's saying is, Let's use our firefighter example again. If I am a firefighter, then I wear suspenders. Then another way I could say that is if I do not wear suspenders, then I am not a firefighter. And that's the same statement, logically. So people that don't wear suspenders aren't firefighters because everyone who's a firefighter wears suspenders. Make sense? Now, here's the one that people, this is the big logical fallacy, is that P implies Q is the same as Q implies P. That is not true, okay? So if we say, if I'm a firefighter, then I wear suspenders, that's not the same as saying that if I wear suspenders, then I am a firefighter. Because there could be some random people wearing suspenders that aren't firefighters. So that, um, that's what we call, I'll write it later, but that's called the converse. The converse of P implies Q is Q implies P, and the converse is not logically equivalent to the original statement. But the contrapositive is, yes, sir? So 
So is it the same to write P implies Q is equivalent to not P implies not Q? No. Okay. Yeah, but that's a really good question. Let me show you why. So here was the question, is P implies Q logically equivalent to, I believe you said not P implies not Q, yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay, so this is logically equivalent to something. It is something's contrapositive. What is the thing that this is the contrapositive of? Q implies Q. Yeah, this is the same as Q implies p and so the real question you just asked me is are these logically equivalent and they are not those are what we call uh, the converse statements and they are not logically equivalent and if you write their truth tables you'll see yeah those aren't the same make sense everybody okay uh all of this stuff i i mean maybe if you're in computer science or something maybe you've seen some of this stuff before or you've taken discrete math but uh, I kind of always think, man, this should be like lesson one of just college, not, not of like mathematics. These are just like things that you should know that if P applies Q is not the same as, uh, I'm, yeah, if P then Q is not the same as if Q then P, that is a form of logic that is used all the time. <laughs> just read the news every day <laughs> and you'll find like blatant once you start to think like this it kind of ruins you uh and in a good way but uh it kind of like you read things and you're like well that's just wrong like that that's just not good logic it's like yeah it's not good logic um okay let's keep going So we have some more useful logical equivalencies. By the way, this contrapositive one, that's really a big deal. Uh, so just remember, some of these, it's just kind of like, you should just know. Like if I talk about, I'm talking about P implies Q and I say, what's a contrapositive? It's like, oh, not P implies not Q. That's good to remember. Okay, the next two are kind of buddies. P and E. Uh, the first one is not P or Q. Uh, is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. Similarly, not P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. All right, so it's kind of like, almost like some sort of like a distributive law that I'm talking about here, that I can distribute the not. But when I distribute a not, this flips. So if you're saying something that's an or, then it becomes an and. And if you're saying something that's an and, it becomes an or. Let's test it in our minds for a second and see if that makes sense to us. And this is another one where it's really easy to make a logical error. It's kind of like you have this statement and then you change it to this, but this is still an or. That's not so good. And let's see if we can figure it out. Let's say P is, I'm a firefighter. Q is, I wear suspenders. So this statement says, it is not the case that I am a firefighter or wear suspenders. So it's not the case that either the or statement is true, I am a firefighter or I wear suspenders. What makes that or statement true? So forget the not for a second. What makes that true? If you're a firefighter or you wear suspenders. One of them is true. Right, so at least one of them has to be true. 
if not even one of them is true, what must be true? So how many could be true here and make P or Q true? One or two could be true. So what's the negation of one or two of them being true? None of them are true. And what does this say? P's not true and Q's not true. So the negation of some being true is none are true. Another way of thinking about this, think about it this way. What makes P and Q true? Both are true. So what's the opposite of both being true? One or two could be true, correct? So this is saying that, um, okay, just a second, let me think that through. So this would be if the, both would have to be true, right? And so not both are true would mean that one of them has to be false or two, but this is saying that either P is false or Q is false. Does that make sense? Okay, and if you don't believe it, make a truth table, right? And you'll see that they have the exact same columns on their truth table. And that's really what matters. Is there the exact same thing logically? So, but you can kind of think it through in your mind and you're kind of like, so if it's not the case that I'm a firefighter or wear suspenders, then either I'm not a firefighter well, I'm not a firefighter and I don't wear suspenders. It takes a little more thinking about it, but once you think a little, I was like, mm, yeah, that isn't actually true. Okay. Okay, those two have a special name. These are both called the Morgan's Laws. Okay. Uh, next, F, we have that um, P and R implies Q is logically equivalent to R implies P implies Q. All right, so this one, it's it's not so obvious like right off the top of your head why this one is important, but it actually is quite important. And basically what do we do in math is we have a bunch of stuff that we know and we have something that we don't know if it's true or false yet, but we think it's true. Okay, but we have all this other junk that we already know is true, right? Lots and lots of it. Let's call all the stuff in the world that we know is true, let's call that R. So what I'd like to say is like, if I know that P is true and I have all the other information in the world and I want to imply Q, then it's enough for me to just assume that all the true stuff in the world is true and then show that if P is true, then Q is true. So if I have this is all the truth that I know and I want to show Q, then it's enough to say that R is true, then just show that if P is true, then Q is true. This is what we call like the direct form of an implication. But uh, for all intents and purposes, we hardly need to know this one, but it, it's what we use all the time without really knowing it. Um, okay. Finally. G. Does it have a name? It does. Uh, I just am, call it like a direct implication. implication. Uh, it's almost too vague right now to even write it down, but yeah, technically it's a direct impl implication. 
And then the final one is P and not Q. It implies, I'm going to use a symbol that I haven't used yet, um, and that is a contradiction sign. Now, this little symbol right here, it looks like a cute star. It's not meant to be. Uh, it's actually two arrows pointing at each other. So it's like two arrows butting heads. And that, that's why we call this the contradiction symbol, because it's kind of saying this is false. And basically, when we say this, we're always saying some this is not correct. This is false. So a, a contradiction is something that is always false. So if you have P and not Q implies false, um, that's logically equivalent to, well, P implies Q. And that should kind of like be shocking. So let me explain that for, and this is what we call an indirect proof. which maybe is the most powerful piece of machinery in mathematics. Um, and basically what it says is, if I want to prove if P then Q, sometimes it's hard. Okay, sometimes it's not so easy to prove that if P then Q. Uh, because I don't really know where to go. It's like, well, uh, maybe I get to assume P is true, and now I just need to prove that Q is true, but... Uh, yeah, what do I do now? And you don't know. So there, you can switch gears and say, okay, I'm going to try something a little bit different. And I'm going to say that P and not Q are true. And then can I show that that is absurd? So think of it this way. If you could show me that it's absurd for P to be true at the same time that not Q is true, that those two can't be true together, then that means that if P is true, then Q has to be true as well, because these two can't be true together. Does that make sense? So if these two can't be true together, then if this one's true, that means that Q must be true at the same time, which means that P implies Q. Yes? If I wanted to like, draw it out of the truth table, for example, yes. and let's say I took that first chunk and um, that was like my R value, yep. and then the other half is the contradict, um, the contradiction. Yes. Wouldn't my possibilities for contradiction be false and false? Yeah, so if you were going to draw the truth table, you'd have like P, Q, and contradiction. And contradiction would just be all halves yes. because it can't be true. So a contradiction is something that by definition is never true. Here's a good example of a statement that is a contradiction. P and not P. This is never true, right? This is a contradiction. Um, it's actually the most common form of a contradiction is you just say that something's true like uh, this is in uh, the shirt is inside the box and the shirt is not in the box. It's like, Nope, that's not right. You know what I mean? So that would be an example of a contradiction statement. But yeah, if you're making a truth table, you just fill every column, the whole column of the contradiction with Fs. Yeah. Can I see if the example works for that? Like, if he was, I'm his son, and Q is, he's my dad. But then it'd be, I'm his son, and he's not my dad? Yeah, so... Yeah, so let's say you're saying that if I'm his son, if I'm his son, then he is my dad. Yeah. So this would say, I am his son, and he is not my dad. Okay. And I need to be able to say that that seems absurd. Well, just by the way we said it, yeah, it actually is absurd. But... Uh, you, in a proof situation, it might not be quite that obvious that it's absurd. But what you need to do, and we'll learn all about this in this class, is what you need to do is start working 
and using these two pieces of information at the same time. And what you do is you kind of work yourself down to something where you're like, oh, the shirt's in the box and the shirt's not in the box. And it's like, oh, that's absurd. So what I said is that like those two together imply absurdity, right? And if you can say that those two together being true implies absurdity, then P implies Q. And that's actually, that's super powerful thinking. Uh, and that, again, this is why I wish that everybody took this class in some sense, is that like knowing how to think this way is powerful. Um, and we'll see even in this class what you can do with it that's pretty cool. Any questions? Let me see how close I am to the end of this section. Not as close as I would like to be. Oh, that's okay. Um, I've got five more minutes. Um, so let me write a definition. It's a tautology. Is a statement. That is true. No matter what the truth values of its prime statements are. So a tautology is something that is always true. So a statement that has to be true. The most common statement, I mean, the simplest tautology I can come up with for you is P or not P. Right? That's a great example of a tautology because if you wrote out its truth table, it would be true, right? There's only one thing that this can be. Now, obviously this is a very simple tautology. There could be a very complicated statement, but at the end, everything in its truth table is all trues. And if you ever get to that place where everything's a true, then we say that that statement is a tautology. In other words, no, it, you cannot change its truth it doesn't even matter what the prime statements are. That statement will be true. I could say something absurd for my prime statement here, like the moon is made of cheese, and it it's true, right? That the true the, the the moon is made of cheese, or the moon is not made of cheese. Uh, of course, this is a very simple one, but it wouldn't matter what you plugged in; it would come out true. Okay. Uh, there's notation for a tautology. Um, we say it's logically equivalent to, it's kind of like a squiggly capital I. Uh, we just kind of say that this is a tautology. Uh, so if you say that something's logically equivalent to tautology, then we're kind of saying this is logically equivalent to truth in some sense, okay, to all truth. Okay. That seems like a pretty good place to stop for today. Um, so, Tuesday, uh, be ready with your homework over section 1.1. Also be ready with your mathematicians and we'll figure out who's doing what on mathematicians if we have some time at the end of Tuesday these might go a little quicker uh, this homework you're basically like saying what's the main connective and uh, construct this truth table and things like that it's a pretty easy homework assignment honestly uh, so we might go through it pretty fast in our presentations yeah yes
Yeah, uh, you can always say, I'll always say yes to that until it says prove that. And as soon as you're doing a proof, then you know this is one per page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So on Tuesday, what we'll do is we'll get together and we'll form some smaller groups and you'll go up to the board and present one of the homework problems to your group. You can use your notes and stuff. So, but we'll just kind of talk it through a little bit. So the reason that I do that is it is helpful sometimes to get other people's ideas. Proofs aren't always like there's just one way. Sometimes there are multiple ways and sometimes you see somebody else's way and you're like, oh, that was actually a lot like cleaner than my way of doing it. I took three pages, they took two lines. And it's like, yeah, you learn something. So it's good to present. And sometimes you find out, oh, we all don't know what we're doing on this problem. <laughs> and maybe we could use a little bit of a push in the right direction. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Have a good day.